Hello once again, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Well, I had just done a video on um, uh, a requested video, which was an hour and a half worth of work, but something happened on my new computer and the video wasn't usable. So an hour and a half of work was for naught. But I tend to look at these. Uh, I got to go over my notes. Maybe there was something I missed. The Lord will be done. But um, anyway, um, and on to the brother who had asked me the question who I answered in a video that you won't see, at least yet. Um, sorry, brother, about that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> hopefully get to that one a little later today, if not tomorrow. I uh, got other videos coming this week, but I'm um, going to be answering another question in this video. Um, a very good question. The question was, where do devils come from? Very good question. Very good question. For this, of course, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. For this, before we get going, as my wife and I and a brother of mine just did, we're going to pray. We're going to pray because this video is going to be specifically aimed at the devil, Satan. And he don't like that. So, please join me in some prayer, okay? Bow your head. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Lord, you will be done, my God and Savior. My God, Lord, Jesus Christ, Father, please get me out of the way that thou, Lord, may speak unto this congregation. Give them ears to hear, eyes to see, and understanding hearts. Lord, put the words in my mouth that you will have me to speak. Guide me, Lord, because I cannot do this unless thou, O Lord, art with me. Please keep us from attack, if it is your will. If not, Lord, during attack, may we keep our eyes on you. For we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Please bless this, if it is your will. And um, just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. When it comes to devils, okay, the word devil, devils, appears 106 times within the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, okay? We're going to look at the first mention of the word devil, okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Leviticus, pertaining on to Levi. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 7. First mention of devil. Leviticus chapter 17. <clears throat> Why don't we get this in context and read verses 5 on to verse 7. Leviticus chapter 17, verses 5 on to verse 7. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, even that they may bring them unto the Lord onto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, onto the priest, and offer them for peace offerings unto the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a-whoring, 
This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. Now the first appearance of the word devils, devil, is right there in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 7. And as I said, the word devil, devils, appears 106 times within the authorized version of the scriptures. What is a devil? Now we can go and look into Webster's 1828 dictionary, but we're going to forego that. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We will be reading verses 1 on 2, verse 15, getting the complete context for this. Okay? 1 Corinthians, oh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, pardon. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 15. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity that is in Christ. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood upon the cross to make atonement for our sins you come to him broken and contrite and believe on him and call upon him, you will be saved. For it is a matter of the heart. It's very simple. The hard part is getting over yourself. For if he that for if he that cometh preacheth preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, lowercase s, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Might Ye might well bear with him. Bear it. Hearing it. Weighing it. Uh -huh. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? I robbed other churches, not buildings, bodies of people. People, person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you I, and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. Desire occasion. Look at verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, lowercase okay, s, which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Seeking occasion, itching the ear, see. Seeking occasion to catch you, captivate you, 
words and fair speeches, smooth words, fair speeches. Trying to get your mind off of the simplicity, which is Christ. To abhor that which is evil. Extreme hatred for that which is evil. And to cleave to that which is good. There is none good but one that is God. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Let's read verse 12 again. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as, as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. When most people think of the devil or devils, what do they immediately think of? You know, horns, red, sitting in a throne in hell, pitchfork, you know, the stigmata with all that stuff, um, their heads going this way, vomiting green pea soup. Sorry for those of you to know who know what that is a reference to. Um, Hollywood, brethren, has worked really hard to give you the definition of what the devil is not. The devil and his angels, the devils, are not little creatures with horns and tails and pitchforks. No, 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 no. Verse 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works, ministers of righteousness. God loves you. God loves you. Just believe. You don't need to change your life. That doesn't happen. It's not a requirement. Besides, it's the Lord who changes your life. He doesn't force it upon you. He's like, that goes, that don't, don't do, don't eat that, put that away. I'm not going to warn you again. Okay? Ministers of righteousness. Satan's ministers are not these, I don't know if any of you have heard of this, these black metal guys with the weird makeup and the, um, what was that that Marilyn Manson twit and Glenn Benton and th those those guys are used of Satan yes they are but they're there to distract from what Satan actually is and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light an angel of light okay what a revelation. Go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Now, you got to remember when reading the book of uh, Revelation, you got to remember two things. Number one, the book of Revelation is written for us, but it is not written to us. Number two, this is about the time of Jacob's trouble, right? 
There are things in here such as, for those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. Okay, there are things that can be for us today, but the book of Revelation is not written to us. It's written for us, but it is not written to us. You have to understand that. Okay, you have to. The book of Revelation doesn't apply for us today. It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay? You have to remember that. Another thing you have to remember, too, about the book of Revelation, ooh, beg your pardon, is that the book of Revelation is not necessarily always in chronological order. Okay? They're not. Obviously, in chapter 4, the catching away, uh, Revelation 6, our Lord Jesus Christ lets loose the end. Uh, oh, there you go. The son of prediction, the uh, son of perdition, the beast. Okay, lets him go. Okay, that is chronological. Okay, we get caught up, and then that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. Okay, we can compare that with the scripture. But Revelation chapter twelve, well there, of course, this isn't. This is very important. Now, personally, before we read this, I believe, personally, that Revelation chapter 12 is giving the tale of what happened before man was on the earth. Okay? That is what I believe personally. Okay? Giving a rundown in the book of Revelation. Okay? That it was from after when that this was happened before. Okay. This happened before, even before the Garden of Eden, and it's being listed here. Okay. That is what I believe personally. Okay. I will talk with any of the brethren of that. Okay. But what we're going to get out of this is very important as to understanding what is the devil and where is it, where do they come from? Okay. So. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun as she went, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. The woman is Israel, the twelve tribes, okay? And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold a great red dragon. Having seven heads. And ten horns. And seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The stars of heaven. His, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. What are these stars of heaven? Let's read it. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Who is that talking about, by the way? Yeah. Do I need to say that? I, you kind of picked that one out. Right? This is pretty simple, though. So let's continue. Okay? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Check this out. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, 
which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 4, And he drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. His tail, third part of the stars of heaven. Stars of heaven? What are these stars? Yeah, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. His angels. Okay? What are those stars of heaven? Not the stars we see in the sky. No, no, no. no. Angels. Let's continue. Okay? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now, there are many arguments, and we're not going to get too deep into this. But, during the time of Jacob's trouble, Satan gets cast out of heaven because he is going to be in the son of perdition. Okay? He is going to be in the son of perdition. Or, a short time, knowing that after the death, burial, and resurrection, Okay, after our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, paid for our sins on the cross to make an atonement for our sins. Okay, that he was cast out. Okay, or another variable to that is during this war, he was cast out before the Garden of Eden. And knowing what was going to happen, our God, our Father, knowing what was going to happen, and Satan tempted Eve in the garden, knowing that he hath but a short time, what is a couple thousand years in light of eternity? Hmm? You think about that. You think about that. And we know in Job chapter 1 and 2 that he has to appear before the throne to get permission to attack those who are of the Lord. As was Job, as you and I are of the church of the living God. Okay? You see? Personally, like I said, I believe that this great war doesn't happen during the time of Jacob's trouble, but has already happened because of certain things that we will be looking at. And he was cast out, having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now that short time could be the time of the existence of earth, the uh, 6,000 years that this earth has been around, or it could be referencing to the seven years of time uh, of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Like I said, I am inclined to believe that what we read about the war in heaven had already happened and the devil got cast out. Okay? But yet he has to come because he, it says that he is the accuser of, our, of the brethren. See? So I think this is telling in Revelation chapter 12 about this war in heaven. I believe this had already happened, but it's being given right here in the final revelation given by our Lord Jesus Christ onto John. Okay? That is what I believe personally. And I will take correction from the brethren on that. Okay? And I will talk with the brethren about that. But that is what I believe personally. Okay? Let's continue. From, at verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Israel. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Uh, remember, an eagle, an unclean bird. 
that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Times and time and half a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Is that the three and a half years? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Testimony of Jesus Christ. So we see right there that during this time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, the commandments of God and the, have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? So the dragon is going to go after the woman and her seed after Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? This we know. Yes, this we know. Okay, so is the short time meaning the time of Jacob's trouble? Perhaps. But is it, could it also be the longevity of the earth? Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. Perhaps. But regardless of this, verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out onto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Go to Isaiah chapter 14. Why was Satan cast out? Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Very familiar verse. Very familiar verses, excuse me. But you ought to know by heart. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12, on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, said that he saw Satan cast out or falling as lightning. Okay? Lightning. An angel of light. Okay? Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Verses 11 on to verse 19. Remember, Satan, the devil, is transformed into an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. Ezekiel 28 verses 11 on to verse 19. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold, 
The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Satan, Lucifer, is a created being. He is not omnipresent. He is not omnipotent. He is not omniscient. He don't know everything. Okay? But look at that. Sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl. He was beautiful. Just beautiful. Look at all those adornments. I beg your pardon. And gold. And right here, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. This is the only verse actually that one could point to to make an argument that Lucifer was in charge of God's choir or something like that. Shaky, yes, but nonetheless, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Obviously, boom, a referencing, referencing that Satan has something to do with music. That's not to be missed. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Anointed. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. What's your place there? Go to Job. Go to Job. You gotta see this. You gotta see this. Okay? Job chapter 1, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 28. Thou of, verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Interesting, huh? Let's continue. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. What was that iniquity? I will be like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. And hello, Isaiah comes before Ezekiel in the scriptures. Okay. Let's continue. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out to the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, transformed as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. And as you have already seen, the anointed cherub, the cover, Lucifer, Satan, son of the morning. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Did I just quote that wrong? Beg your pardon, brethren. Lucifer. How art thou, yes, son of the morning. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Okay? Again, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries. By the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. 
All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Okay? So we see, Satan is not what Hollywood tells you he is. And hello, Hollywood is under the control of Satan. So he wants to give you these ideas that he's a red guy with a pitchfork, horns, doing all this. No, 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 no. Hollywood has worked really hard to paint a picture of Satan that isn't, rather than the one that truly is. He's a beautiful angel of light. Why do you think sometimes sin looks so attractive to you? Why do you think it looks so beautiful? Think about that. Because he is an angel of light. And his ministers, his ministers of righteousness. A little bit won't hurt. Everybody does it. I know when to quit. Yeah. Yeah. And also now, okay, also now, Go to Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. We have to read this. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. This is Satan. Okay? Thou wast in the Garden of Eden, was in Tyrus. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. Question God's word. Yea, hath God said. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, yes, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. He did not say that. Eve added to the word what God had spoken. Let's continue. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So you see two aspects of what is Antichrist. Yea, hath God said, questioning what God has said, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, replacing two things, questioning what God has said and replacing God with something that isn't God. Yourself. Because, brethren, when you are your own judge, when you are your own authority, you are doing the works of your father, Satan. Hence, Antichrist. Because it says right there, For ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Exalting man. Which is what Satan does. Now also go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 under verse 4. Okay? And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, sons of God. Angels. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, 
for that he all for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. So you have angels having relations with the daughters of men and producing this breed of giants. See? Okay? But these sons of God, these were angels. These were angels, fallen angels. Fallen angels. Okay? having relations with the daughters of men because they were fair. And because of that, fallen angels having relations with the daughters of men, half-breeds, you could say. And because of that, there were giants. Okay? So the sons of God right there these are angels. But now, go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Okay? Matthew chapter 25. One verse in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil and his angels. Hmm. The devil and his angels. So thus far, thus far, what do we know? Okay. That Satan, Lucifer, is a created being who was in the Garden of Eden and he was covered with all kinds of precious stones. I beg your pardon, brethren. And he was covered with all kinds of precious stones. He was beautiful to behold. We also know that he is transformed into an angel of light and that his ministers are ministers of righteousness. Okay. A devil, dear brethren, is not a little creature with horns and that kind of stuff. No, a devil. A devil is a fallen angel. The devil is the anointed cherub that covereth. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We have to read Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened who were, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past Ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among, among whom also we all had our conversation in, time pa in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. Even as others, prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Satan, the devil, Lucifer, who is transformed into an angel of light. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Who is the little g God of this world? Satan. Satan. Satan is the little G God of this world. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Um, Luke chapter 4. Verses 5. Under verse 7. Luke chapter 4, verses 5, on to verse 7. And the devil, the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And boy, isn't that a little carrot dangled in front of the face of so many, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? And let's go to Luke now, since we're in Luke, Luke chapter 11. Okay? Prince of the power of the air, the Satan. Okay? He is the little G God of the world of this world. It has been given on to him to do pretty much as he pleases. Pretty much. He has to get permission from the Lord because nothing happens without our Lord say so. Okay? Okay? But to whomsoever he wills, he gives it. Okay? You have to remember that. Go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. We will be reading verses 14. On to verse 26. Okay? Now you're going to see something. And he was casting out a devil. And it was dumb. A devil. A devil. A fallen angel. A spirit. Okay? Spirit. Fallen angel. Okay? And he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb, not able to speak. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. The chief of the devils. Hold your place here. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, not Zephaniah, Brad. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. You got to see this. Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Prince of the power of the air. You had to see that. You had to see that. Okay, go back to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Okay. Picking up at verse 16. And others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven. But he knowing their thoughts said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also divide 
If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Take your pardon, brother. Chap lips. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out, and when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Seven other spirits. And it says here, in verse 14, and he was casting out a devil. Okay? Devil. Devils. Spirits who are fallen angels. Okay? Angels that kept not their first estate. Okay? Okay? Where do devils come from? Devils are fallen angels. Okay? Devils are fallen angels. Spirits. Wicked. Spirits. Okay? Spirit of wickedness. Okay? You get it? Okay? Now, let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. Come on, come on, fingers working. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 6. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person, spirit, soul, and body. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. False brethren brought in unawares. What does it say there? Brought in false brethren unawares. Remember, his ministers are as ministers of righteousness. So see, devils, wicked spirits, evil spirits, Fallen angels can infiltrate. Yes, brethren, these devils can enter into a person, spiritual and body. How many times have any of you seen that with your own two eyes? Hmm? Yes, a devil, a wicked spirit, a fallen angel can enter into a person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And it says here, 
false brethren. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Remember, Jude does not have chapters. Okay? Jude. Verses 1. On to verse 6. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace, and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only, only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Hell is reserved for who? The devil and his angels? Hmm. 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 So for for there were for there are certain men crept in unawares. Lying spirits, evil spirits, devils, hmm? who are fallen angels, the devil and his angels, cast out of heaven. Okay, you get it? Devils are fallen angels, wicked spirits, evil spirits. Okay, that's what devils are. Devils come from disobedience. These devils came from their own pride. Okay? Thinking, getting captivated with their own selves. Because Satan drew a, a third of the stars of heaven with his tail and cast them to the ground. There were angels that followed Satan. Lucifer. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, followed Lucifer. Fallen angels. Evil spirits. Those are devils. Where do devils come from? From angels that leave their first estate. And of course, the prince of the devils is Satan, the anointed cherub. Okay? And we are not in, ignorant of his devices. Oh, no. See, the devil will have people to infiltrate. Because they are ministers of righteousness. Because the devil himself is transformed into an angel of light. And his ministers, as ministers of righteousness, you know, God loves you. Just believe. Prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is, don't need to do that. No, just believe. Just believe and receive. And then smile at you. And there are devils out there perverting the gospel twisting the scriptures and guess what they're here on YouTube as well 
Go to Titus. Go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. These ministers of righteousness. Ministers of righteousness. Okay? Ministers of righteousness as compared unto those of us uh, of the church of the living God. Titus chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. See, we are pure because we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. When we die, we are absent from the body, present with the Lord. Okay? His righteousness is imputed unto us. Imputed righteousness. Okay? Hence, the righteousness of God is given unto us. Okay? Not our own righteousness, but God's righteousness. So unto the pure, all things are pure. This is pure. And the statutes and the ordinances that are within the scriptures. The doctrine for us today within the Pauline epistles for this dispensation. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled, something got into them. Oh boy, I wonder what that might be. And unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Now go to Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter three. Verses 1 under verse 9. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power there. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. Uh, who, who did Satan go after in the Garden of Eden? Went after Eve. He goes after the woman. You know, not that he can't go after a man to like destroy the house or whatever, but the false prophets. Go after the women. The devil. Go after the woman. First, usually. He'll go after men, yes. But we have right here. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janais and Jambres which stood Moses, withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Keeping in mind that Matthew chapter 7 is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is the constitution of the millennial kingdom. Doctrinally, it does not apply for us. Instruction and in righteousness is there, of course. But doctrinally, 
Sermon on the Mount is not for us today. It's for the Millennial Kingdom. Faith is mentioned one time, and it's in the form of a rebuke. O ye of little faith. But let's read this. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15, on to verse 27. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Think about this. How can someone, how can someone claim to be of the church of the living God and make videos that are scripturally accurate where when you follow them along, they don't miss a T, a dot and I, right on, scripturally accurate. No fault. Airtight in some cases. But yet, in works they deny him. In works they deny him. How, how is that? How can someone who is fake come in, preach accurately according to the scripture, but yet still be lost? How is that possible? How is that possible? Number one, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Lost people can get a lot of the gist of scripture. They can. But the deeper things, they know not. And one can do sermons or whatever that are right on looking online or whatever they need to do to get their videos or sermons done, but yet still be lost. It says, ye shall know them by their fruits. How do, you, how do you judge their fruits? Well, if you're just going off of what they are preaching or teaching, because this is the word of God. This is perfect. This is inerrant. This is true. The authorized version of the scriptures. The word of God speaks for itself, people. We know that, do we not? And how do you judge them by their fruits? What are they when the camera isn't on them? What are they when they're not standing in front of the people? You know, putting on the act. What are they like then? I've told you. The one you see right here is the one you're going to get if I were to meet you personally face to face. Okay? And I have a witness to testify to that. Thank you very much. Who you see is who you're going to get, brethren, when you're looking at me. But what happens when you got someone in a pulpit putting on the act? What do you got get when someone's sitting behind a camera putting on the act and they're away from that? What are they like? What are they like away from the limelight? There's your fruit. There's your fruit that you judge. Okay, thank you for the shakiness. Verse 21. In Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is, heaven, is, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, works to be behold, things that people could see, on the camera, in front of the pulpit. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Some of you will be like, oh, Brad, you're, that's a contradiction. You have said in a video that God knows everybody. Uh, yeah, everybody is written in the book of the living. But not everybody knows the Lord through a personal relationship. Okay? I never knew you, meaning through a, a relationship with the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, brethren, sisters, there are so many. There are so many out there who can talk a good talk. Who can give you sermons in the pulpits on YouTube that are right down the line, smack dab, accurate. You follow them along in the scriptures. It's like, oh, oh, good, good, really good. And when you judge upon that fruit, but then something happens where someone who is doing scripturally accurate videos or preaching. But then, what, what are they like? Away from the limelight. Hmm? They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. It says right here that we've done many mighty works in your name. I never knew you. And remember, brethren, <coughs> <clears throat> Remember, brethren, the devil and his angels know that this is God's word. Perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. Why do you think he tries to um, counterfeit it? To replace it, which he cannot do. And you uh, do any research into Alberto Rivera, a uh, former Jesuit priest who was killed by the Jesuits? The Jesuits study on how to behave as King James scripture believers. And quite frankly, there are those out there who say they are of the Church of the Living God and who speak accurately. Through the scriptures. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Verses 13. On to verse 33. Matthew chapter 23. Verses 13. On to verse 33. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Very quickly, kingdom of heaven, reference to the actual physical kingdom in Jerusalem, where our Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, when he comes back, is going to rule and reign from. This is instruction in righteousness. So you know, let's continue. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses. Hi, Jesuits. You devour widows' houses. You read in the Sacrita Monita, which I have a link on my channel for that. There's, uh, what, two or three chapters Specifically devoted within the Secreta Monita, the secret instructions of the Jesuits, how to use widows 
Okay? I just have to. Let's continue. Okay. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Look at these enemies here on YouTube. The enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They're seeking to make one proselyte. They will go to anyone who seems to be out of favor or seems to be having some kind of problem or whatever it is. Have you noticed that? How one would make a stand for the truth and then something happens within their personal lives or whatever it is, then the enemies start coming back to them. It's like, oh, hey, we're, you know, we're all good. Starting to withdraw some of the videos they've made. I, I have to mention this. Um, you devils, you infiltrators, you, what, you don't think we don't know what you're doing? What? What? Well, you think you're so smart, don't you? There are several, many who see what's going on. Okay? It's quite obvious. And, um, you know, for some of you who have emailed me, um, some of you have gave your true selves away. Some of you have already given yourselves away as to who you actually are, hiding under a certain name. You see, the Lord will allow these things to happen to teach the Church of the Living God what to look for in the future as long as we got. Some of you have made this so obvious. Oh, what's going on? What you doing? Okay. You're making, you're looking to make, ye make him, ye, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. <clears throat> ye fools and blind. For whether is greater, the gold, which comes of the earth, or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. Temple made without hands. Hmm. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and the blind. For whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that swear, shall swear by heaven, Sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon, him, singular, by him, singular, not them. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Let's look, look what's mentioned first. Judgment. What's mentioned second? Mercy. 
What's third? And faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at the gnats and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter. Make the outside clean. Fine preaching, hard preaching from the pulpit. From detail stuff after here on YouTube or whatever platform. But within, they are full of extortion. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Self-examination starts with from within, then goes out. Not from without, that goes within. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Ministers of righteousness, anyone? Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, Ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? First Timothy. First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 5. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmising, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. You've got to remember, brethren, see, often when we think of gain is godliness, what is the first thing we think of? We think of the do re me, right? Right, money? Beg your pardon? Right? No, no, no. You have to think a little bit broader than that. Gain is godliness onto these devils to get one person away from the truth and make them their proselyte and make them a twofold more child of hell than themselves. 
and look at what they've done. Some of those who were, uh, they claimed that they were in the Denlinger cult and they come out of it supposedly or whatever, right? What, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? Worse, ain't they? You once stood for the truth and now you've gone and preaching easy believism. Just believe, just believe with that very soft face of yours. Eh? No. See, the devil and his angels are running rampant. And they're trying to infiltrate, and they have infiltrated. But ye shall know them by their fruits. What are they like away from the camera? What are they away? What are they like away from the pulpit? Hmm? What are they like when it's just you and he, or you or her, or whatever? What are they like? Does the person, spirit's own body, match the scriptures in their walk outside of the eyes of all? That's how you judge their fruits. Because there are, like I've said, there are many out there who scripturally teach right stuff according to the scriptures. But when you get them away from the, the limelight, the real person shows themselves. Where did devils come from? Devils are fallen angels, evil, wicked spirits. Okay? They didn't come out from the pit of hell. They weren't created in a factory. No, no. And at the end of this video here, now. Now, after all this, now, let's check this out. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay, we went through the scriptures. That wasn't all of them, believe me. But devil, as a uh, as defined by Webster's eighteen twenty eight dictionary, devil noun in the Christian theology, an evil spirit or being, a fallen angel expelled from heaven for rebellion against God, the chief of the apostate angels the implacable enemy and tempter of the human race in the New Testament, the word is frequently and erroneously used for demon. Demon. Two, a very wicked person. And in ludicrous language, any great evil. In profane language, it is an ex. Expla uh, expletive expressing wonder vexation. Three, an idiot or well, excuse me, I'm sorry. And uh, I'm sorry. An idol or false god. And it gives the Leviticus chapter 17 and also Second Chronicles chapter 11 where they were worshiping devils. Okay. So let's read that again. Devil, in, in the Christian theology, an evil spirit or being a fallen angel expelled from heaven for rebellion against God, the chief of the apostate angels, the implacable enemy and tempter of the human race. In the New Testament, the word is frequently and erroneously used for demon. Erroneously used for demon. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Webster thinks that the word demon should have been there instead of devil? Right. 
Two, a very wicked person, and in, and, uh, and in ludicrous language, any great evil and profane language, it is an ex, expl, expletive, expressing, expletive, aha, an expletive, expressing wonder, vexation. An idol or false god, with reference to Leviticus chapter 17 and Second Chronicles chapter 11. So Mr. Webster thinks that instead of devil, it should say demon, huh? Yeah. 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 Right now at this time, brethren, the devils are coming out of the woodwork. Every single time, those who are false will manifest themselves every single time. It takes time, yes, sometimes. Some are like, get out of here. No, it takes time, more often than not. Every single solitary time, one who is false will always be made manifest. In one way or another. You know why? Because they can't keep up with the lie. They can't. They can't. Not even Satan can do that. Well, now, hopefully this one will be fine so I can upload it. Like I said, the one that I did before this. Um, anyway, on to the brother that asked me this question. Hopefully this answers your question for you. Like this question. And plus there again. <laughs> plus there again. This was a very needful kind of video. Because of all the devils that are out there right now. Proving how late the hour actually truly is. So it's going to be it for this video, brethren. Um, been working pretty much all day. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I might have another video to do today. I might. Uh, there are some uh, um, expository videos coming within the future. So um, anyway, thank you very much for watching this. If you do, I hope this helped you, brother, who asked me of this. Thank you. I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.